All right, number two, don't push through it. Listen and take breaks accordingly. This is contrarian to what I've heard. Yeah, most people are like, and I don't know about you, do, but I grew up in a military family. It's like, oh, just suck it up. Just tough it up. And there are points to that. There are, there are times where people are just a little B and they need to stop being a little B. And I actually invited someone to tell me that the other day. And yeah. they told me that and it felt good because it's what I needed to hear. Right. Yeah. But, but you need to understand where you are and the right steps you need to take to get over that burnout successfully. You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. Welcome to the Smartest Guys in Marketing podcast. Here with your host, Chris Evans and Taylor Welch. Today, we are talking about the four ways to handle burnout. This is a hot topic. If you're an entrepreneur that presses the pace, you push hard, uh, you might have experienced burnout. Maybe you're there. I just want to know why you haven't asked me to talk like one time. We're like 10 minutes into this episode. Oh, I thought you were over there playing Tetris since you were looking at your phone. Just sitting here waiting. I was just carrying us, bro. I was just carrying us because I thought you were doing other stuff and I I didn't want to call you out. Rule number one, always look for a business partner who tries to include you. That's rule number one. Rule number one, yeah. look for a business partner that always tries to protect you. I love that. No, we're we're on a we're in a special live edition of the podcast. If you don't know what that means, that means that we're actually streaming this recording live to one of our groups. Smartest guys in marketing. If you're not in that group, what do you do? I don't know what to life? tell you. I, why can't we be friends? That's what I want to know. Why can't Sing it. we Sing it be for friends? Us. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we <laughs> be friends? That's what I want to know. Get in that group. And you after that, to go do ahead that. and go rate, rate this show on <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> oh, we are talking about something so important. Um, yesterday, we had an office day with one of our upper echelon clients who was in town. And we talked about positioning and we kind of built some stuff for her marketing wise. But one of the topics that came up is burnout, burnout. She, um, she's doing about a hundred thousand a month. I think 120,000 a month is her sweet spot. And, uh, we started talking about burnout as an entrepreneur. And then this morning in one of our other private client groups, someone was talking about burnout and I was like, dude, we need to do an episode on burnout because it is probably the, the biggest risk to taking an entrepreneur out of the game. The biggest risk is probably losing your drive, getting burned out. And Chris, we've been through this a million times. So we got some stuff to say about burnout. Well, dude, interesting you say that because on the uh, mastermind call that came up as well, mm. people were asking about burnout. So it definitely is a hot topic. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs experience that. So we've been through it and we want to give you guys some tools to deal with it. Yeah. Here's the tagline for today. Burnout is a vision issue, not a workload issue. Mm. I posted this a while back uh, on my profile. Someone was like, what helps you with your vision? And someone said bifocals. Okay. So not talking about uh, literal vision with your eyes. I'm talking about like, where are you headed? What is your mission? What are you trying to do in the world? And if you find yourself working too hard for things, so I want a Rolls Royce. I want a new house. I want a new puppy on the beach. I mean, things are cool, but if your vision doesn't include other people, you're going to lack the torque necessary. It's my favorite word, torque necessary to make it through resistance. So you got to fix your vision first. We hit this place a couple months ago and we probably hit this actually every three or four months. What did you say? Yeah. Like probably like clockwork. We're just like, you know, we'll show up to the office and we're supposed to be meeting on something and Chris can tell I'm not paying attention. He's like, dude, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I don't know. I just somehow went to the Tesla website and started building a new car. Like I'm can't focus and I'm like, and, and it's like, then we kind of know, like, you know, we're at a place where we're, we're kind of lacking drive 
and energy. And we, we probably need to recommit to a better vision. Anything out of that before we hop into four points? Yeah. Well, just, I mean, you'll notice that we've, we've probably been a little bit quieter uh, last couple months, especially me um, from the burnout that we experienced in March. I just got to a place where so many things in our business were bloated um, and there was so much, uh, such a lack of an efficiency and we were doing things that at the end of the day, we just weren't happy with. I think we had lost our sense of purpose to some degree and our vision to some degree. Um, and so we just had to go in and retool everything um, and basically burn everything down and rebuild with our marketing, our offers, everything. Which is not necessarily the answer if you're going through burnout. <laughs> Reading it like letters. It's like, I destroyed my business and I don't feel better. Yeah. Not, that's not necessarily the answer. But for us, it was the right thing to do because we wanted to get that next exponential curve. We wanted to get to the next level. And we wanted to do it quickly. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's all about energy, right? We needed to yeah. find some things that gave I us I want to say something real quick because this came up on the call oh, yesterday. Take it away, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Take man. it. I think some people honestly don't really have the right to be burnt out. Well, like, wow. that was really harsh. If you don't have a big team and tremendous amount amounts of responsibility, you're only doing like 10 grand or 20 grand. Um, you shouldn't really be burnt out. Like if you are, you're probably doing a lot of the wrong things that one don't give you energy Two, you just shouldn't be doing because they're not important. Like there's only a few core things at that level in your business, especially that you should be doing. So the message for you, if you are there, whether it's 20 grand, 50 grand a month, um, and you're burnt out, you are definitely doing things wrong. In addition to what we're going to talk to you about today. Yeah. So can I take that just straight into our first point? And yeah. I'll just do the Absolutely. first one. Absolutely. So what you said there is just so important because it is true. Some people are like, man, I'm just so burned out. It's like, bro, all you do is eat Twinkies on the beach. Like what the hell is the matter with you? Like, is it that hard for you to find food? Like you're burned out being a lazy, you, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like you, you don't have the right, but that's still a vision issue. And that's the point number one is it's not a workload issue. It's like legitimately you work four hours a day and you're burned out. Something is wrong with your vision. It's called yeah. you have none. If your vision is defined by you looking in the mirror, you're burnout city. All you care about is yourself. You're burning out, burning out. You're going to burn out the rest of your life. So it's a vision issue and i think that when it comes down to it people will sometimes get weird about this and like well it's not all about the money for me you know it's not it's not all about making sales for me and it's like and they say these things to like box themselves into a cage but it's really that's real egotistical to say because money is a direct byproduct of the the value and the transformation and the tools you're providing people and so if you've caught yourself saying, well, it's not really about the money. Like I don't need more than 20 K a month. You got to actually recognize that you're being real selfish and all you care about is just getting enough for you, you, you like, I want to get to $10 million a month. Not because I need to buy a bunch more stuff, but dude, if we get to $10 million a month, how many people's lives are we changing? Yeah. How many people are giving us money because we're making them more money than they're giving us. So, if you're burning out and you're, you're, you're looking at your life, you don't know why, the first place you should start is what is my vision? Does my vision only include me? Does it include others? How big do I want to play? And you're playing too small or you're only thinking about yourself and that's probably where your burnout's coming from. So that's step number one is fix your vision. Yeah. And just to add on to that, dude, I think I've noticed that people who say that kind of stuff, um, it is like the excuse uh, of their failure right? So the excuse um, for them not to show up and put in the work that's required to accomplish that vision. And the other thing I want to add to that is the other thing that is like when people, um, they put their vision in front of them and if it's like 
you know, if it's 20 K a month, obviously for us, you know, we do that in the morning many, many times. Um, but what I've noticed is if people don't have a big vision that they're shooting for the little things that they accomplish, exhaust them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we get burnt out, you know, going to a million bucks a month. So we can accomplish way less than that. And it's just like second nature now. And so when people have such a small vision, like I notice that whether it's like, oh man, if I could only do 10,000 or if I could only sign like three clients, their rate of burnout is so much quicker than people yeah. who have big vision. Yeah. Truth, bro. Hashtag truth bombs with a Z. B-O-M-B-Z. Just going to leave that right there for everybody. All y'all Dropping them bombs like North Korea, yo. All y'all millennial. Chris isn't a millennial, but I'm a millennial. So I can I can relate to you guys. All you little okay. young whippers. Okay, cabos. number two. Number two, take us there. All right, number two. Don't push through it. Listen and take breaks accordingly. This is contrarian to what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, most people are like, and I don't know about you, do, but I grew up in a military family. It's like I grew up in a I grew up in a Christian family. Even worse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my God. We're gonna have a long conversation after this. But no, it's just like, you know, I think a lot of a lot of times in our society it's like, oh, just suck it up, just tough it up. And there are points to that. There are, are times where people are just a little B and they need to stop being a little B. And I actually invited someone to tell me that the other day. And yeah. they told me that and it felt good because it's what I needed to hear. Right. Yeah. But, but you need to understand where you are and the right steps you need to take to get over that burnout successfully and learn from those mistakes. Yeah. I think, I think that this is like probably a balanced thing because again, it goes back to what you're saying before, where it's like, man, if you're just getting started, you got to know that your workload is going to, it's going to be harder than you think it, it was going to be. It's going to take you longer than you thought it was going to take. It's going to require you to say no to so many things that you said yes to your whole life. It's going to change you. And you can't just be like, oh, I'm tired. I'm not going to work this weekend, bro. That's all you got. You got to build something out of yourself. But when you get to a place of, you know, success and prominence and things are working, I think that your emotions become much more of indicators and you got to pay attention to them. And sometimes the word on the street is like, you just got to push through it, bro. You just got to push through it. And that's like, you know, how you end up in, in really, really bad burnout scenarios. And so one of the things we'll do is like, if we are feeling burned out and we're kind of getting to a place where we're lacking energy, we'll, we'll just take the day. We'll just go do something different. Uh, we'll take a couple of days. You know, we, we've actually worked in um, different periods in our calendar annually to make sure that we disconnect. Because if you're, when you do fix your vision and your vision gets bigger than you, it can be easy to just like, I just work all the time. Like I don't do anything else. Uh, people are like, man, what are your hobbies? I'm like, I love uh, writing ads. <laughs> I love taking sales calls. I'm like, bro, what is the matter with you? But it's like true. You love it. You enjoy it. You're building something that's just like, it's addictive. But when you do at that spot where it's like, I'm about to like jump out the window. Don't push through that. Take a break. Go get your life back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, rest is natural law. Yep. Human beings need it. And the people who say that you don't need it, um, I don't think are that wise. Yeah. Well, they're just going to probably die early because I ain't sleeping. All right. Number three. Anything else you want to hit number three or you want me to hit number hit three? Number Hit number three. Hit num- All right. Number three. Numero tres. Oh, look for at all you. Our, uh, for all our Rosetta's- Hispanic friends. You know, we're, we're, we're a multicultural company. <laughs> right? And we welcome all backgrounds. All right. Numero tres. Diagnose correctly. Diagnose correctly. This morning, I was in a conversation with a wonderful client in, um, in CK. And she's talking about burnout. And she's like, you know, I'm just like, I, I burned myself out a while ago 
And the last time I got burned out, I ended up in the hospital. So I'm like really scared to show up fully every day because I don't want to burn out again. I'm like, okay, why'd you end up in the hospital? Cause that's, that's, that's the kind of a different level. That's different than, you know, and she's like, Oh, I just, I didn't sleep and I wasn't drinking water. I was like, okay, whoa, <laughs> like that's not burnout. That's called like, you're not doing normal human things. And so you're going to the hospital. I think what a lot of people will do, and this happens all the time in business is people are like, Oh, like my ads didn't work. So I'm going to create a new program or like all oh, this. I can't get my sales calls fixed. So I'm going to like reduce the price. It's like, we're okay. You're missing accurate thinking. If an ad doesn't work, you don't change your program. They're not related. They're not connected. They're different. If you can't get people on the phone to buy, it's probably not your prices. It's probably you. And so it's really important when it comes to burnout and really anything in your business that you can tie up the right cause to the right effect. Because if you're just trying to change a bunch of causes and you don't know what effects they're tied to, you're going to be all over the place. And so when it comes down to burnout, look at your habits, look at your routines. Like, are you sleeping? Like, are you drinking water? Are you eating? Are you like hanging out with friends? Are you learning new things? I'll tell you, dude, number, the number one thing that causes burnout for me, you know this, Chris, because you call me out on it, is like I'll go three weeks and I don't remember reading anything and I haven't learned anything. And all of a sudden my brain is like just getting depressed because I'm not learning anything. And it's like, oh, I'm just working too hard. But that's not actually the cause. Yeah. And so you got to know the things that set you up to win. I would say sleeping is pretty important. <laughs> Don't go to the hospital because you're not sleeping, but that's not a burnout issue. You got to be able to accurately diagnose. That's my thoughts on that. Yeah, I think there's this crazy thing where people don't understand and they haven't learned how to optimize. And I think, one, you, you diagnose what the issue is and then you understand how to optimize for yourself. Like, yep. what do you actually need? Like, I might need less or more sleep than Taylor does, you know, to operate at a high level. I might need to drink like three gallons of water a day to operate well, at a high level. Your high level is significantly lower than my high level. So, okay. Was, okay. Now you're embarrassing yourself. Just kidding, man. That was a joke, bro. <laughs> no, but it's the same thing. Like you said, in business, instead of yeah. fixing what's broken and optimizing the issues, people just want to like scrap it. They just want to start over. They just like want to, what's so funny. Can you share with see? us? Did you see Scott's comment on this live stream? <clears throat> Man, Scott, you are one of a kind, bro. No. You're going to have to read it. And this is why you need to be in the group because I'm not going to repeat that. But I love – I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. That is a very important part of high performance. As an entrepreneur, maybe we'll put out a course on this one day. So, anyways, as I was saying – Sorry optimization you have to optimize whether it's yourself whether it's your sleeping habits your eating habits your exercise routine or you know your actual business 100 percent, 100 percent. love that great addition all right you do number four why because dude just just do it just, just listen to your just, daddy you just got mad at me then you just got mad I'm not mad at all, but I need you to listen to your daddy and just do number, number four. Number one, it's a vision issue. Fix your vision. Number two, don't push through it. Listen to it. Number three, diagnose correctly. Number four is you can reduce your goals. You can reduce your goals. Or grow or up. You can, or you can grow up. I think this is like, this is one of the biggest um differences between like me and you and how we operate versus the rest of the world there are a few people out there who get this but it's really quite simple if you're feeling burned out and overwhelmed you can always reduce your goals you can always play at a lower level you can always achieve more and think less or achieve less and think less and do less and this is the thing like Sometimes people get into this weird scenario where it's like they're complaining, 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 complaining. And it's like, well, why don't you just, you know, lower your goals? And they're like, well, I don't want that. Yeah, let's grow the F up. Like stop complaining. If you want something that nobody else has, you get to do what nobody else is willing to do. You can't be the obese person sitting on the couch 
eating Doritos, complaining about being fat. That doesn't work. That doesn't yeah. work at all. Like, so you can either change your goals to fit closer to what your current reality is, or you can just take it. Or what you're willing to suffer. Yes. And the trials and tribulations you're willing to go through. So you can't have one without the other. If you want big lofty things, whether it's taking vacation, uh, whenever you want, and being able to just completely dip out, it's gonna require work, it's gonna require trials and tribulations, and things you have to put up with that you might not necessarily enjoy or love in the moment, but that are, those are the dues that you are paying for that end result. Yeah, totally. Yesterday with, um, um, with these people, you know, we were talking about competition. I was like, I don't know if we have competition. I'm like, eh, what are you talking about? And here's the thing. This is why I'm saying that. It's like, I will go through so much pain that people cannot handle to get to the vision that we have. And as long as you're screwed on straight of like, dude, here are the things that I'm willing to sacrifice to achieve this mission. Then you can outlast almost everybody else in the game. And so when it comes to competition is like, if you want to make your competition irrelevant, you shouldn't go run ads and bash them. We're not in the game of politics. What you need to do is you need to double down and create such momentum and such buzz and be willing to make it through the lowest pits to survive. And eventually you will wake up one day and you'll look around and you won't see any competition. And you'll be like, where'd they all go? Well, you got caught in yeah. a pit somewhere and you made it through and they didn't. That's why it all goes back down to vision, 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 because the bigger your vision is, the more you're willing to tolerate to achieve that vision. The lower your vision is, the less you're willing to tolerate. Boom, boom. Game, set, and match. That's it. Burnout. Burnout for days. Bring it on. Unbelievable. Hey, guys. Real quick, what I want to tell you is Why to go uh, to... Go, <laughs> we be we, uh, we release these, uh, these little slips these little slips of uh, paper every month from the principal and they're called monthly memos and they're very good. In fact, somebody they're posted very educational. Somebody posted in smartest guys in marketing. I forget who this was, but she's like, I've invested multiple five figures into client kit and the programs and the $7 memo from this month changed my whole life. I love you very much, but if you haven't gotten the memos, you're an idiot. I D I O T fix it then come back thank me later i love That's that you pitch. spelled that and it would have been hilarious if you spelled it incorrectly <laughs> i-d-o-o-t <laughs> idiot idiot all right guys all right see you next time see ya